So fall's a really great time to take your classic car out for a little country road. Um, get a little time in the convertible. If you get some good weather, it's not hot. It's, uh, the leaves are falling. Got family in. You can take people out for a drive. Uh, so it's also the time of the year when you got to get your car ready for winter. So, you know, pulling the cars out of the garage and getting them ready for a quick drive. This car, my uh, 79 Super Beetle, the brakes were locked from the garage. And so, you know, it was really hard to move the car with the brakes locked. <laughs> so um, I finally got this wheel off and found out that the parking brake had been setting for a while and it chipped off. Can you see that little piece, right? It chipped off pieces of the brakes. Um, let me, I want to get my fingers in there. So this little piece of brake shoe, this little piece of brake shoe right here had gotten between the, the shoe and the wheel. And so it didn't matter how much you, you, you released the brakes, this was jammed in there. Um, so what I'm going to go over today is uh, how to change the, uh, the drum brakes on a 1977 um, Volkswagen Beetle. It's not that difficult. It does take some special tools. Uh, so uh, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, change the shoes on this thing. First thing I always like to do um, is take a picture. Uh, I put it together right once. I'm going to be able to put it back together and know where the springs go the second time. But usually when things get taken apart, they get put in a pile and then you can't remember how to put them back together. So first thing I do is take a picture. All right, so next thing is you need to manipulate these little springs. So these have a little push button, little dealie that's like a post that... Um, comes through from the back. So if you put your finger back here, you can feel the head where that's holding. And then you just take a, a pair of pliers and you grab the outside of this um, uh, plate around, the, around here and you give it a 90 degree turn. And you'll see there's a slot that once you give it a 90 degree turn, that slot will, will fall in and then you can pull those off. Let me show you how that works. All right, so put your, you put your finger in the back to hold this little post so that it won't fall, it'll go through. And you grab the outside, grab the outside of that little plate, and you push it in. And you give it a 90 degree turn, and off it comes. Just like that. Do the same thing on both sides. Now you don't want to lose these things, so go ahead and push them back like that. Same thing on the other side. Oops, just give that a 90 degree turn. Of course it always does this when you're taking a video, right? There you go, just like that. Not too hard. Now the advantage to that is now these springs can, can be taken out of tension by just pulling it like that. You don't have to worry about pulling the springs with any kind of a spring puller tool or anything. You just take them out of tension and then Bob's your uncle. See how easy that is to, ma to manipulate those springs? Okay. You want to check those to make sure that they don't have too much wear, but they're a whole lot easier to deal with when they're not in tension. We're going to clean those up too. All right. Now, on the Volkswagen, the shoes have a little retaining clip for the emergency brake. So this this little this little lever it has a little retaining clip right here and you can take a, a screwdriver and um, put it in the slot and then give it a turn but you have to keep it from spinning so i'm going to go ahead and do that um, give me two seconds all right so here you see i got it all disassembled um, here are the uh, uh, the emergency brake 
con uh, components. There's a lever and then the, the spreader, which uh, uh, shares the load when you pull that. It goes between here. Um, you have the two little uh, uh, anchor devices that use these little springs. And now you can see a little bit better, there's a slot. So when you can turn those 90 degrees, that's the slot that goes in. <coughs> Here's the little retaining pin that I was I was uh, uh, fighting with. <laughs> this thing is uh, made of like uh, zinc. It's very malleable material, um, and that connects right in here when you get ready to put it all back together again. And then you just squeeze the points to keep it from coming out. Um, pretty straightforward. So uh, here is the offending item, and you can see right here the. Uh, uh, the brake shoe has fallen off on the back side and those pieces have uh, uh, they, they got caught around in, in inside the drum and then they went in between the the shoe and uh, and the drum and they they shimmed themselves in there and that's how the brakes got stuck uh, uh, applied they were they were stuck there was no way this car was going to move with that um, the way that I got it to the point where I could get it up in the air was trying to move it back and forth. Uh, obviously, you know, gravity is your is your friend in that case. You just want to get that little piece, whatever it is, in between the two shoes uh, so that you can manipulate the car. It's still dragging along and it was still making a mess and I wouldn't want to drive it with that, but uh, that is the deal. Um, so we're going to go ahead and replace these. And uh, and the, the first thing to do when you replace them, uh, aside from buying new ones, is to clean it all up. You can see with uh, um, with the drum brakes, unlike disc brakes, the drums become a basket. Here's the uh, the two pieces that broke off of that brake shoe. But this this becomes a basket, and between this and the uh, the plate back here. The uh, the brake dust has nowhere to go. It very it, it comes out. There's a couple of holes down in here. So it's not like it's sealed, but uh, with um, disc brakes, uh, your your wheels get really dirty with uh, the the brake dust. In this case, the majority of the brake dust stays inside this this compartment. So it's a real wreck. There's a lot of brake dust in here. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to get some brake clean. We're going to spray all this out. That's what I got the drip pan for here. And we're going to get all that brake dust down. It's a lot better to do it with brake clean than to blow it away with an air compressor because brake dust is a carcinogen. Uh, you don't want to breathe that stuff in. Um, and it's, it's really harmful for you. So uh, that's, that's how we're going to manage this. We're going to spray it off and get it wet with uh, brake clean. Brake clean is a really great product. It... Uh, it evaporates very quickly. It's made for uh, for you know cleaning brakes. It's uh, it, it once once it's clean, it dries really fast, and uh, it'll it'll remove you know all the the brake and grease and, and oil and everything that's that's in there, uh, and it doesn't leave a residue. Unlike uh, if you were to use like WD or some other kind of a light oil, the oil would be detrimental. You wouldn't want oil to get on any of the surfaces. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start cleaning this up and then we'll get ready to reassemble it. All right, there we go. All nice and cleaned up. All right, so the next thing you need to look at on this is that when we put the new shoes in, they're not going to be worn. You can see on here the, the wear pattern um, of, the, uh, of the shoes. This is a little bit thinner down at this side over here. Um, and the new shoes aren't going to be worn. So what we need to do in order to get the new shoes on is we need to take these uh, adjusters and um, push them all the way in. Uh, and you do that by um, advancing this little cog. And you can do that very easily by pulling this spring down. Instead. There we go. And then you can with the spring down, you can move these things very easily. Well, or you can just take them apart. Anyway, you want to uh, 
You want to you want to push these all the way down to the to the so that they're flat all the way. These are a little need a little attention. Um, I wouldn't want to call them rusted, but they're they're not free free wheeling. So I'm going to give these a little attention. We'll get them um, all the way down so that we can have enough room to put the new shoes in. All right, we're free free wheeling now. You see, this thing moves just fine. Um, one thing, when you're putting these back in place, you'll notice how there's an angle cut into this uh, this landing here. The, um, the short end goes up like this. So when you're putting it in, make sure that the short end is up. That gives the, uh, the brakes, um, when you see the shoe, it's going to sit in an angle kind of like this. And when you advance them, they'll ride on that angle. So anyway, short end up. All right, so now we're back to uh, assembly. The uh, first thing to think about with assembly is to, everything needs to be clean. Most importantly, you don't ever want to touch the, 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 the wear surface of the brake shoes. So um, anytime you're touching them, try to you know, you know, touch the edges or touch just the metal pieces. Uh, so I referred back to the picture that I, uh, that I took at the beginning of the project. And uh, I've laid out the, the components. The first thing that needs to go back on is this, uh, this little lever. And it will go right into this little hole right up in here. All right, so there you go. A little bit of coaxing. I actually had to use a small rat tail file to get some of this extra paint out of there. But uh, that's what you should see right there. The, the alignment is that this little hook goes that direction so that it can, it can grab that thing. And this is going to sit kind of up in, in that curve right in there. The, uh, the, the hook for the brake, the, the parking brake, is going to go into that. So let's flip this over and put that retaining pin in. All right, so once you get that pin on place, all you need to do is take a pair of pliers and give them a squeeze on the end, and that will keep it from falling back. Now, these things just, they're, if you're reusing the old one, you're going to make sure that you clean it up so that it will slide into the groove, and you have to open it up wide enough so it can get back in there. So let's go ahead and give this a squeeze, see if I can catch that with one end. Nope, it's going to be two hands. There you go, all squeezed in place. That'll keep that in place. And uh, the pin should be free freewheeling. See, the little lever is going to lever fine. That lever is going to be yanking on this little bar that's going to go across right here. You see how that goes? So let's go ahead and put that bar in place. All right, so this bar has uh, two, two different sides. Obviously, there's one side that goes into the single side, uh, into the... Um, uh, the single brake shoe and the other one goes into the side that has both the brake shoe and this lever. Um, so you just have to slide that baby in there. And then you can put the spring on the top. Once you get that, you just put the spring on the top and that will hold it. Alright, so there you go. Um, it's a lot easier to move these into place without these retaining pins um, or the retaining um, apparatus uh, plugged in on the sides um, because then you can you can load and unload the springs really easy like just by see how easy that is to unload the spring right there and you can just push it right back in place so um, now we have them kind of loosely fitted we can go ahead and put these in so let's demonstrate that. So real quick, I kind of went over this um, when we disassembled them. But if you grab this outside, um, this outside sheath here, what you were going to do is you're going to, you're going to introduce it like this and then you're going to turn it 90 degrees. And what that does, you can see there's a little, a little slit and then there's a little groove. So this, you just want to make it go into that little groove like that. 
So if you reach in the back back here, you'll find the hole. Uh, he said confidently. Here's the hole. All you want to do is get it to come to pop out through here. All right, so you reach through and you put you want to poke it through the back so that it's going through there. You kind of set this where you want it to be. Put the spring on like that. And when you when you set it, you want to know you want to know which way it's facing so that you can set the uh, the retainer in the right position. In this case, I'm going to, I'm going to do it horizontally. Good pair of pliers. Get it well, well balanced. And should be able to just slide that baby in there. Give it a quick turn. Sure you get it to, to, to crisscross. You want it to go completely 90 degrees so that it doesn't uh, vibrate out of position. There you go. Let's go ahead and get the other one and then we'll be, uh, we'll be ready to put this back together and bleed the brakes. All right, last little thing before we put this brake drum on. The, uh, the brake drum, you see on there the, the, the wear surface, um, it has no grooves. Uh, this this is uh, uh, this car gets parked a lot, and what happened to make the brake shoe break? I don't know if you can see. There's a little little mark right in there. You can see where basically it's a semi-metallic brake shoe, and this is a fully met metallic brake drum, and uh, and so it kind of rusted in rusted into position. So when the brakes were um, here, we go. You can see really pronounced little grooves right in here where the end of the brake shoes were and they just uh, rusted into place. Um, so uh, I cleaned this up with a light abrasive and some, some brake clean and uh, it came out really good so we don't have to worry about turning the drums. Um, so let's go ahead and throw this baby on there. This might be a little tricky. So when you added the material, this brand, brand new brake drums, um, or brake, brake shoes, they become thicker. So we've taken everything in here, including the, uh, the slave cylinder, and, and squished it in to try to get it in as far as close as we can. But these are very adjustable, and so they may not be on center. Uh, so the first time you put the drum on, it may not line up completely. Well, or it might just go straight on, no problems. <laughs> so there you go. All right, uh, the next thing that goes on here is this, uh, this retaining nut, this little castle nut. These things have an unbelievable amount of torque that you put on them. Um, and uh, the trick with that is get them tight and then and then tighten them to make the castle m match the hole. Um, you may want to before you get too far take a note as to where the hole is, so you know where to look for it. This is going to go straight down. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and get this thing in there. This is a special tool that you use. This is uh, um, well. I'm gonna cut that out. The other thing that makes this difficult is, uh, you know, you don't have the brakes on. You don't, you won't have the brakes on until you're ready to adjust them. So what you need to do is put it into gear.
All right, there you go, all tightened up. Uh, tighten this in there, I put the cotter pin in, bent it over the ends. I'm just gonna put the tire on and um, uh, then we're gonna uh, start bleeding the brakes. Um, I'm, I'm not gonna cover the bleeding the brakes on this video because it's a whole bunch more stuff. Um, maybe I'll do another video on that later. But um, when you do one, one set of brakes, you always have to do the other because you make sure that they're matched. You don't want one to wear out before the other. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and repeat the process on the other side. And uh, so there you go. This was uh, diagnosing um, a set of brakes that are locked up uh, after being um, stored for the winter. And uh, in this case, you can see that the brake shoes had fallen off and wedged themselves between the shoe and, and the drum, uh, prompting us to replace the brake shoes. Uh, so there you go. That's the video for today. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I hope this was helpful. If you had the same problem uh, or if you have a 79 Super Beetle with uh, drum brakes or any car with drum brakes at all, uh, this should be a applicable video for any of those things. So that's it. Have a good day.